Peace everyone, Unmask Art here, and welcome back to the Drawing Journal. Today, uh, I'm just doing a random stream. I didn't have this planned or anything. Uh, I've been having a lot of fun playing around in Photoshop, doing some digital painting, and uh, trying out some new tools that Photoshop CC 2008 has. And one of the really cool tools that I'm going to talk about in a minute is the Color Palette Maker. And whether you are a digital artist or a traditional artist, I think the Color Palette Maker is something that equally helps both, uh, both art styles, both art uh, uh, mediums, whether it's digital or any traditional. And I've been having a lot of fun with it. And I sketched up this picture here uh, earlier this morning. Um, I was going to stream earlier, but it uh, just took me a while to kind of get things set up. And uh, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm actually sitting right now. Uh, my stand, I'm, I'm painting my stand today now that the weather is finally halfway decent. And so that's why I'm sitting again, but it won't be for too long. Probably just for a couple days. Uh, but so anyway, I have this picture here that I sketched up like I said and this um, So if you can see my mouse over here This feature is only in CC 2008 so uh, Whatever other version of Photoshop you have I don't think it exists anywhere else and it shows up right here on uh, the sidebar and it's grayed out right now and if you click it Adobe color themes is what it's called and you can create uh, different color palettes. The other thing that you can do with this, uh, which is really, really cool, is you can explore other people's color palettes. So say I wanted to, um, say I wanted uh, to do a picture that was like bright and happy, uh, maybe outside, so I'll pick like a summer. So I'll type in the word summer, and then it will search for everyone's uh, color palette that they uploaded that has um, kind of like the bright summery colors to it and you can just scroll down and see like tons and tons of really cool color palettes and then one of my other one of my favorite features is the under the create option so when you're creating your own color palettes uh, if you go over here to create there's this little tool right here called color rule and if you're not familiar with with color theory and you know complementary colors or triadic color themes or monochromatic, uh, this this does the work for you. You don't even need to know color th theory. So you have anal analogous, which is just five whatever colors you want. You have monochromatic, which obviously will give you one color to choose from, and you can see that as I pick my uh, base color here, it gives me the the palette of the monochromatic so you can find the color that you want and then of course it has the complementary which is opposing colors you choose um, your base color uh, whatever you want whatever saturation level and it gives you the perfect complement uh, that would be a really fun one to do uh, and then you have compound which um, compound is uh, not quite complementary but it's it's really close to complementary and I'm actually using a compound color palette that I made just before the live stream uh, you have triadic which is very fun if you like uh, doing cartoony stuff um, triadic color schemes are really really great uh, which actually um, let's see here so I did a so I have this uh, drawing here that uh, many of you are familiar with uh, because I uploaded this last week and I wanted to do a, a coloring competition for this piece and I have uh, all of my layers over here that I was working on because uh, I have two versions that I painted uh, I posted this version this is version one and then version two I did but I hadn't posted it yet and uh, I actually used a triadic color scheme for both of these that I created using the uh, the theme the Adobe color theme tool and uh, you can see that this is more of like a fall version of this scene and then I brightened it up and this is more of a summer dusk scene it's a little bit later in the evening I changed the lighting uh, and then of course my colors that I chose give it a completely different feel for the environment 
and uh, it made it really really simple I have you you can see my color scheme here that I'm going to use today is off here to the right um, but I just wanted to uh, mention that tool really quick uh, because it's super useful and uh, it can benefit you whether you're doing digital art or traditional art okay uh, enough yammering uh, let me say hello to Lilian, uh, Anna, Hildy, Shiny, Christine, uh, and Kristen. Hello uh, everyone. Did I see Wendy's lizard? Yes I did it's fantastic the I, I commented on her post it, it is really great. The second way yeah I like the second version of that that drawing as well that coloring. Um, anyways, so uh, I have my, my uh, what, what is, version was this? I forget. <laughs> it was the compound color scheme. So I'm using a compound color scheme based off of this teal color. And so what I'm going to do right now is just kind of uh, fill in, I think I'm just going to fill in the background here with this color, kind of desaturated and uh, grab a brush let's see what was what is my brush doing here i'm gonna make a new layer uh tones just a tone layer uh, check my brush here yeah okay and i think what i'll do is get this color uh, the other thing the other tool that uh, i like in photoshop is my color uh my color wheel up here um, I forget how I did this. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can figure out how to do this. Workspace, Essentials, no. Arrange, no. Uh, I think it's in the, the Preferences, General Preferences. Yeah. Color Picker, I think. Adobe, maybe. I don't know. Hue, no. I'm not sure what it is. Let me see. I want to find it because Having the sliders here, I have the hue saturation. Um, and I'm trying to find it so that if you don't know how to get it, maybe I can show you how to do that. Is it this? Okay, maybe it's not. I forget how. Maybe it's just a right click. Interface options. No. Either way, I'm sure this. So, this is the hue, obviously. This is the saturation of my color that I have. And then this is the uh, brightness, the value of it. So, uh, when I have my color scheme, all I do is alter these two bars. I never touch the hue. I only touch the um, the value and the saturation level. So for instance, like uh, I'll bring up my, my value a little bit to get uh, a lighter blue and start brushing in some of, uh, I think some of the jacket here. So I'll just kind of start sketching in where my my jacket is and with this uh, with this picture I don't actually want any uh, line art so I'm going to fully try to do uh, a, a, a painting without line art so I'm, I just have the sketch down and then I'll use the colors to um, to fill in where the uh, objects are and then I'll get rid of the line art and then I'll do the rest of the painting with just the brush. I just downloaded um, a few like custom brushes offline just before the stream, so I'm, I'm trying this one out. It's a little looser. And that's what I that's what I am that's why I'm using this one. It was a free download that I just randomly clicked on, so I, I don't I don't have the link. But uh, I also wanted to mention that uh, in the video description I have I have the link 
to this line art here. So if you wanted to uh, color it yourself and show me your mad skills, uh, feel free to download the line art for this piece and use it as much as you want. Like I said, I just uh, I just did a quick sketch of this uh, in the morning. Uh, as you can still as you can see, it's rather uh, sloppy looking. But uh, yeah, all right. I'm gonna brighten this up a little bit and desaturate it because uh, he's gonna be wearing a white shirt. So I'm gonna put in this white shirt here. Oh, hello, uh, Silverine. And Wendy, good morning to you. Uh, is doing the whole thing blue similar to using toned pieces of paper? It can be. It can be. It just depends on um, how, like, what kind of style you're going for with your digital art. Um, you know, you can use you can use your brush transparency to your advantage, um, and then when you have a toned layer like I do with this, you know, that's what the colors look like without it. Um, the only reason that I'm doing the toned background really is to have the full image colored in and not have not be working on white. Um, I kind of already have an idea of what I want this this picture to look like. So I'm using I'm using this darker grayish blue layer to set the stage for all of my other colors. I want it to be, um, I don't know, kind of like a classic looking scene. Uh, I think I might, uh, I, I normally would establish my lighting, uh, but I think what I'm going to do is probably have a light source coming from this way. So I'll have, I'll have the light source coming from there, I think. And then that will make everything on this side darker. And I don't know, that's that's kind of how I'm feeling this image. It's just, I'm not going based off anything. It's just how I feel at this moment, but it could change. So I'm just using these, um, these colors uh, because in my mind uh, with this color palette that I'm using. Uh, this teal color, this bright teal color, is something that I want to use very sparingly. So um, I'm going to use the teal color to bring attention to his face. And then, of course, these orange and red colors here um, I'm going to use for the skin tones. So I have this kind of uh, nice, um, this nice uh, color scheme with the oranges and reds and these blues here and I'm, I'm actually going to be avoiding the teal uh, for a majority of the time until I, I get the uh, until I get most of the details kind of colored in I mean this process is going to take a really really long time and I'm for sure thinking uh, I'll be streaming for several hours um, I'm actually, actually, I kind of like his his coat light. Before, in my mind, I was thinking of having a lighter or a darker, a much darker coat, like almost black. But I kind of like the uh, the light blue for now. So this is his belt down here. I'm just kind of blocking in uh, as much. As I can, and I'm thinking, I think I might do a dark couch instead, and then I'll have him lighter. So he's sitting in a dark chair. I think I'll do that. Just kind of scribble this in. Oh, good morning, Wendy.
So once I get uh, like the objects and stuff blocked in, I'll go in and start refining some of the details a little bit before uh, getting rid of the line art. That's going to be kind of my strategy here for now. Yeah, but I think I like him in a dark chair. Like a dark, uh, dark suede chair. I feel like that's going to help bring attention to him and make him stand out on the page. This is why I do uh, these like base colors very broad uh, because I'm I haven't worked with any of the shadows yet or established my light source, but for now I'm just like establishing the composition of values overall for the for the colors throughout the image. Um, all right, let's go ahead and grab a skin tone color. I'm just going to lighten this up a little bit. Actually, no, I'm going to darken it just a tiny bit and see what it. Uh, no, I'm going to I'm going to lighten that. Let's see here. Uh, desaturate it just a tad. Hmm. Let's see if I can lighten that more. Just working, okay, I think, yeah, I like that skin tone. So I'm doing all of this on a single layer because this is just very blocked in stuff. It's not too important to get, uh, to, to preserve these colors. So just on a single layer. Oh, you know what? I forgot to uh, forgot his, his sleeve here for his shirt, his undershirt. There we go. Put his hand in right here. So if you guys have any uh, questions, feel free to ask. Uh, you know me, I'm always, I'm always open to questions. And then I also wanted to um, say thank you to all of those that had uh, recently purchased my new colored pencil course. Uh, very, very happy with the number of people that have purchased it so far. Uh, it's fantastic, uh, super exciting for sure. So thank you for that. I appreciate the support. I think uh, in the first in the first like twelve hours that the course was available, I think I sold somewhere around fifteen or sixteen copies of it. So I was uh, I was very happy with that result. I don't think my other courses were so uh, so well received just shows how many people were really, uh, really waiting for that course. So I promise not to take as long uh, on the next one. All right, let's see here. I think I'm going to go even um, a bit brighter on the shirt. I'm not sure I want it to be tinted blue so much. So let's go maybe even less saturated, a little bit more grayish. Yeah, I think that I think that will help. So bring out his eyes a tiny bit and see how that works.
Oh, hello, Chrissy. Oh yes, uh, Christine. It's it's great seeing the people, um, the people posting the work in progresses of the of the portrait from the course. It's it's very exciting. Definitely, definitely exciting. All right, let's go with uh, let's go with a reddish hair. So I'm just gonna throw some of this in there. So you can uh, you can already tell like how well these colors are working together, um, and it's so easy to pick them. Like I don't have to I don't have to like try and like manipulate the colors. I don't have to go in here and start playing around with like all the hues and stuff, changing uh, changing the colors to find the ones that I want. Um, I simply create my color palette in the beginning. Um, and then I just start applying the color. All right, so let's see. I want to, um, I'm going to make his drink red too. I think that's pretty good for the like the base coloring. Oh, you know what? I need I need um do his cigar here. Might add a little bit of brownish color to his cigar. I think that makes sense. Yeah, I think I like the overall, um, like the value differences between each article of clothing and then uh, him in the background. I think what I might do with the background as well um, is I'll take like a, a slightly lighter version. Let's just make my brush real big. Change the uh, flow. So I'll brighten up right behind his head here. Let's go even a little bit brighter perhaps. A little bit less saturated. Let's just uh, give that a quick, quick blur. Maybe not that blurry. There we go. There. Maybe just uh, darken it a tiny bit. Or maybe brighten it. No. No, keep it a little bit darker. And I will also take that same color, maybe uh, saturate it a little bit, but also darken it. And just. Uh, do some darkening around the edges, kind of give him a, a, a little bit of a vignette and blur that. Let's see if I go darker with it. Yeah, I kind of like it darker, maybe a little less saturated. There, now it's all in one layer. <clears throat> Thank <laughs> you. 
uh, I'm late for this. Guess I'll go back and watch from the beginning, eager to see how this works. You know, uh, Elizabeth, I'm glad you're here. I'm kind of uh, eager to see how this works as well because I barely know what I'm doing. <laughs> I honestly, like, I didn't have a lot going on today. I'm taking somewhat of a tiny deserved break because I was going like a thousand miles per hour uh, since I got back from the States. And like, I just, I wanted to take some time to just decompress a little bit and not do something that felt so work related. But here I am streaming and uh, it's it's all good. I have been kind of goofing around with Photoshop a little bit the last couple days and I figured, you know, why not just why not just hang out and draw and color with everyone? I mean, it it didn't make sense to not do it. Uh, so I decided to just uh, throw on the live stream and do this because I was gonna do this regardless. Um, I was I was going to color this and draw this um, whether I live streamed or not. Uh, so I figured it would be a lot more fun to do this uh, and hang out with all you awesome people than to just sit here by myself and, and do it. So let's see. I'm trying to think of where I want to begin. Uh, I don't quite feel like I'm ready to cut out the line art. Oh, now I know where I need to go. So uh, I'm going to create a new lighter, lighting, uh, and I'm going to establish the lighting. So uh, what I am going to do here, let's see. So like I said, I want the lights to come from here. So uh, I think I'm going to start with his jacket. So I'm going to just come over here, grab the jacket color. I'm going to darken it a bit and desaturate it a little bit as well. Actually, no, I'm going to actually oversaturate it. And let's just, um, I'm just going to work in some of the shadows. So where the light is going to be uh, not as strong. Uh, obviously cast shadow from his arm here, across here. Uh, this will all pretty much be shaded. Uh, this is the collar here, so that will be shaded there a little bit. Pocket. I don't know if I want it to be a strong light. I'm kind of thinking like I want it to be a strong light. So actually what that would what that would cause is more shadow and then a more uh, contrasted highlight among the edge kind of this hard rim light uh, and I'm thinking I'm gonna do something unique with the the light source I might make it a little bit more orange or something along those lines uh, of course this is all shadowed here Maybe a little bit showing right there. And that would all be shadowed. His arm, not as much shadow on that side, but on this side would be like full shadow. And I might actually have like a, a secondary light coming from the other side. So kind of a dual light a little bit. So I might have a, a little bit of a, a shadow happening stronger in the middle. So anytime you're dealing with a secondary light source, what it does is it actually pushes the shadow towards the round, uh, turn towards the center of round objects, like his arm sleeve here. Uh, his head would be doing a, a cast shadow across here like this. So his whole shoulder would be kind of covered. Something like that. Maybe a little, little bit of a shadow here. Uh, let's go a little bit darker and a little less saturated. Oh, Kristen, uh, I almost never know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, you, you'll hear you'll hear it more often than than not. I think 
I'm always I'm always pretending that I know what I'm doing. All right, just deepening some of these shadows here. His elbow should be pretty dark. There we go. Still somewhat preserving the color of his jacket um, without, uh, you know, without altering it too much. And I'm literally just using the same color, but altering the um, the darkness, lightness stuff. Uh, did you say that there is a continuous delete button? on Photoshop. Uh, so I have mine altered, uh, I think. So preferences, let's see. There's, um, where is that? Enhanced controls, is that it? No. General, no. Tools, no. No, 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 no. I forget where it's at. I, I forget where it's at, but um, I changed the keystroke. So control, uh, well, mine is command Z, but I think on PC it's control Z. Um, my control Z undoes, but um, it's usually command shift Z that undoes continuously. Um, so usually uh, Command Z will undo redo. It only undoes the last step and then redoes it again. So you can turn it on and off. But I, ha I never used that and it always got annoying for me to have to hold Command Shift and Z to keep going back. But yeah, like Wendy said, you have, you have this window here that will take you back I don't know, a hundred steps or something like that. Pretty, a lot, a lot of steps. Uh, probably more than enough steps for you to realize that you made a mistake and you need to go backwards unless you did half the painting on the wrong layer. All right, uh, let's do the light source on the chair, I think. So I'm just gonna brighten this up. Uh, I'm gonna keep it desaturated because I don't want, so the light source is coming from over here. Uh, I don't want the uh, chair to be blue. I want it mostly to be gray. So I'll do a little bit of light there, uh, a little bit on the arm of the chair right here, and then on that edge. So just a little bit like that. Uh, and then of course up here a little bit. So not a whole lot with the chair. Pretty, pretty simple. Uh, probably uh, add some texture to it later. Uh, let's see, let's do the um, the shirt now. So I'm going to add just a tiny bit of blue and then darken it to, I don't know, about there I think. And then just come in here and start doing the lighting for the shirt. Keep it kind of uh, a light gray for now. This uh, coat here will be casting pretty large shadow all, all the way across it, somewhat like that. There we go. Now I'm gonna add even more blue and go just a bit darker. 
shrink my brush a bit. Oh, hello, Ruby. Yeah, Christine, I know you're um I know you're you're getting into Photoshop and stuff, so if you have any questions that I can answer, I'm I'm happy to regarding Photoshop. I have no have no problem doing that, showing you some stuff. Um, I know you're you're doing just like kind of a um, photo manipulation a little bit to come up with your next uh, painting idea. Uh, and uh, the brush tools uh, are really helpful for that as well. Um, I'm not sure if you know uh, masks, uh, how to use masks on your different layers, but um, that's like a super important tool uh, with photo manipulation. It just helps you kind of fine tune edges and uh, it's a lot better than using the eraser tool to do stuff like that. Let's add some color up in the eyes there. Uh, Alright, let's... Uh, I'm gonna do his his pants though they're just kind of there. Uh, I think I have... I think I have to have a crack at digital art. I, you know what, I think everybody should if they're able to. Um, it is a lot of, it is a lot of fun, uh, and it's always nice to just command Z, command Z. It's like you make a mistake, command Z. Um, you almost, you almost get so used to command Zing that, uh, when you start working traditionally again, you, and you make a mistake, you, you go hunting, your, your fingers go hunting for, for the command Z button, and it's like, ah, I can't do that. I need to remake that line, but I can't. I have to pull out an eraser, go old school. Uh, yeah, the brush tools can be really, really confusing at first. Um, so for like the photo manipulation stuff that uh, I saw that you were working on, uh, let's just let's just go over a couple quick tools that I think um, are just vital to understanding like everything. Let's, let's just start with this. So I'm gonna be on a new layer here. I'm gonna name it just test, right? Um, and let's say, uh, let's say you have a photo of, I don't know, um, let's, just, let's just say you have uh, a photo of a ball, right? I'm just gonna do this. You have a photo of a ball, but it has, um, it has this really, uh, it has this background to it. I, I probably, I could have done this a lot easier on myself. Let's just start over. <laughs> I'm gonna grab the marquee tool, okay? Brush. Okay, let's, let's say you have a photo that you're working on or whatever. There we go. Let's grab the ellipse tool. And you have a photo of a ball. It's a red ball or an orange ball. Right, and it now looks like a Japanese flag. <laughs> Did not do that on purpose. So um, say you have this photo, but you don't want the background to it, and it's not a solid color. Just pretend that this isn't the solid color. Uh, you could take the eraser tool and erase, like, you know, kind of as much as you can. Let's say you erase as much as you can. But you don't want to go over, like, the ball, because the only way to do, uh, to get that back is to, to click the undo button. Like, you don't want to be doing that. So what you do is you come down here to the layer mask button. So follow my mouse. It's down here. It's a little square. Oops. It's a little square with a circle. And you'll see that uh, now, wait, I've added the wrong layer. So uh, you're on, you have your layer selected with the ball. You click the mask button and it will create this new square right next to it. And you have to switch between those two squares. Well, when you're on this square, that's the mask. And you'll notice that, I'm gonna change my brush really quick. Yeah. 
So you'll notice that uh, your colors are only black and white. If you look over here, uh, my colors switch from black and white. Here's my normal colors. Here's my mask tool. Because uh, masking tools only work with black and white. So now when I color with black, I'm making the image disappear like that. And then if I color, if I color back with, uh, with white, I'll make the image reappear. And that's like the benefit of the masking tool because now I can come in here with my brush. Uh, let's just, I can come in here with my brush and I can fine tune that edge when I'm trying to delete something from an image. I can fine tune that edge so that I can get just the ball or whatnot. And then if I go too far, I can just switch back to my white and I can color in where I messed up. And that just lets you fine tune that edge uh, a lot easier than trying to use the eraser tool. So that's masks. The other really cool thing, let me get rid of this. The uh, other really cool thing um, that I like to use uh, is clipping masks, and that's a little bit different. So let's start with a ball again. Let's just do this. Um, a clipping mask is what you apply to another layer. Uh, so you create a new layer, and you'll see down here this new layer. So test, um, and then clip, clipping. So what you do is you right click on the layer above it, you come up here to create clipping mask. And now you'll notice that there's this little arrow to the left side that points down to the layer below. And what that does is it, uh, it makes it so that you can't color on anything other than the ball. So no matter how much I color out here in the blue space, it, it won't color anywhere else. So it's a it's a just an awesome tool to use when you know creating highlights uh, or or work or coloring in general. So you can you can color and just do um, do it without worrying about coloring over the space uh, anything. Yeah. All right. So that's um, then. What else? Um, so I don't know how to do it on Control Alt. If you hold down Control Alt and then you click, you can change your brush brush size. So I'm touching, I'm I'm like clicking on the screen as though I was painting, but I'm holding down Control Alt. If you go left and right, you change your brush size. If you go up and down, you change the softness. So here's a real soft edge. Here's a real hard edge brush, and then changing the size. It just makes it like that much faster to. Um, uh, it just makes it that much faster to kind of change your brush size. The other really easy tool is the bracket key next to the P uh, letter, the letter P on your keyboard. The left bracket will make it smaller. The right bracket will make it make it larger. I use that button all the time. Uh, what else? Um, I mean, those, just knowing those like three or four things can significantly change the your your process with uh, with photo, photo manipulation or coloring. It doesn't really matter. All right, let's get back to a uh, a bit of of this uh, drawing here. Um, I think uh, I'm totally satisfied with the colors, uh, the way they look. What I need to do is fill out all of the, uh, the information cleanly. So I think what I'll do is I'll start with the jacket. So I have my lighting down. Uh, actually, no, I need to do the highlights. But actually, no, no, I don't. I, I'll save the highlights for later. So let's do, um, uh, let's do the jacket. And I'm just going to kind of zoom in here a little bit. Grab my jacket color. Uh, I think I'm going to use a slightly more accurate brush here. So I'll just go through my brushes and see if there's anything. 
but I like a soft round brush. No, I don't like that. And flow. I kind of like this brush. <clears throat> come up here and start brushing in where I want the jacket to show up. Oh, you're welcome, Christine. Not a problem. I colored for a really long time using just my mouse. Um, <clears throat> and actually Photoshop, uh, Photoshop has made it easier to color with a mouse. You know what, these lines are kind of distracting. Magic wand tool is helpful. Yeah, I, I like that one. Uh, I don't use it too much. I like to do all of my isolations by hand. Uh, do I use a Wacom because I'm deciding to make a manga and I don't know which drawing tablet to buy? Um, actually, I use an Oogie 2150. Um, it's a fraction of the price and I've never had any problems like with the quality of it. Um, I think Maybe the biggest problem with the uh, the Oogie is is the uh, the screen is a tiny bit darker than I'd like it to be, but uh, you can just brighten it up a little bit and get a truer color. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of this brush either. I'm going to use my ink pen. Where is it? I can't figure out which brush I want to use. I kind of like this one, but I need shape dynamic on. Clone stamp is also very cool. This, this process is, uh, is very time consuming, uh, especially when you know as little as I do about the process of doing a digital painting from like start to finish like this. Um, 
uh, it's yeah it's it's definitely a challenge for me so I don't know why I made this on another layer. I should have just, um, yeah, I think, I think I'm just going to put it all on one layer. Yeah. Just put it all on one layer. And I think I'm going to change brushes here again. Like I said, I just cannot decide what brush I want. Shape, transfer. Pen pressure, and then diameter, there we go. Yeah, I think I like that brush better. And make it bigger. Uh, the other really quick tool that I, uh, hotkey that I am constantly using over and over again is just the Alt button with your brush. It turns it into the, the eye drop picker for your color. So if I'm working with the lighter color, I can just select it and then I can I can use it. And then if I need my darker color, I just hold down the Alt key, click on it once, and then I have it. See, did I have any other questions? Oh, Steve, I didn't see you in the chat. Hello, good morning. All right, let's see what my line art is. Uh, darken up that spot there. You know, I never did do the um, shadow for the skin, so let's go ahead and do that. How does that work? That's pretty good. I think I'll saturate it just a bit more. with the brush underneath the lip now like I said I have two light sources on the face I have the main light source coming that way and then a secondary light source which is a bit softer coming from here so his cheek won't be completely shaded I think drop shadow uh, his hand will be pretty dark underneath cast shadow from the shirt and just overall a bit darker uh, this hand will be sh shadow here underneath the thumb 
and then this side of the fingers kind of like that yeah starting to come around a little bit I think uh, and I can do the hair as well so let's do a bit of highlighting on the hair main source other source here kind of skip that area in the middle something like that put it up just a bit higher on his head that would make the the light source coming down from the top rather than straight from the side Let's see. Yeah, see, this is when when I'm doing traditional work, I know exactly what my workflow is. But as you can tell from like my lack of decisiveness, is that when it comes to like the digital stuff, I'm actually not quite sure where I should go and when I should do it. Um, so I'm just kind of making it up as I go. I think uh, I like the looseness uh, surrounding him. So I think I might just zoom in on the face a little bit here um, and start doing some fine tuning of the skin and the face and especially the eyes. So I'm going to, I think, I think I might do this on a new layer. I can always change it if I don't like it. So let's go with um, this color here, brighten it up. It's about that's about where I want it for the uh, the eyes here. Actually, I might just uh, use my lasso tool to draw out the eye. Like that. Do the same thing over here. Oh, hello, Ankush. Oh, you like the face, do you? <laughs> Thank you. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to go a bit more desaturated and even a bit darker. I want his eyes to like have a really nice piercing gaze to him. Darker for the uh, irises here. Uh, and like I said, I'm, I was saving the teal color uh, for one thing, and that's his eyes. So I'm going to use a bit of teal there. His pupils. It's a bit smaller with my brush now. Do some f slightly tighter details. Oops. Uh, grab this red here for the uh, tear duct. Add some red into his eyes.
uh, give him blood eye, blood eye, bloodshot eyes with that glare. It would look menacing. Uh, not, not, I don't want to make it too bloodshot. I still want him to be uh, attractive. I don't want him to look evil. Not too evil, anyway. <laughs> Let's go for a little bit more teal. Kind of bring in just a few bright dots here for highlights. I feel like I went a little overboard over here, so let's just break that up. Uh, let's grab lighter color. Bring in some highlights uh, in his pupils. You never want to go like full white in the pupils because uh, it just it looks a little bit too artificial, in my opinion. So yeah, I'm not. I'm gonna stick with that. Let's go with the black and do some outlining. Well, let's increase my flow, transfer, and let's bring that up a little bit. Oh, hello Elise. One thing with uh, doing guys' eyes, you don't want to make the uh, the eyelashes too uh, too wild and crazy, like you would the eyelashes of a female, because uh, that makes their eyes look a little bit too feminine. All right, let's uh, do some eyebrows now. Kind of a deep red. I'm just darkening up some of the cast shadows that's going to show up from the hairs down to his nose. Uh, looking forward to going through the colored pencil portrait course. Uh, oh, well, I am excited for you to go through it as well, Chrissy. I like how you made his eyes masculine and angular. Good manga style. Yes, yes. Uh, that's, that's kind of like um, my go-to uh, approach when it comes to working with uh, male eyes is that I tend to just make them a little bit more uh, angular rather than rounded uh, so that they they don't look as feminine
Let's see. I'm never quite sure how to do the nose, so I'm just gonna build a base here with my shadows. Nothing too distinct. I think I'm going to take off shape dynamic. Other thing is like the lips, not uh, not like outlining the lips uh, as heavily as you would with the female eyes. Go up here, grab this purple color. Bring in some purples into his skin. And again, I've, I've, I haven't went outside of my color palette. So all the colors that I make um, are just by changing the value and saturation levels of the same five colors that you see over there on the right side. That's the, that's the power of, of a, a well-established color palette. You, you can do a lot with just a few selected colors. Uh, did I release my advanced color pencil course? Uh, so I released my portrait course, which um, I don't know if I can say that it's advanced, uh, but I can say that it's more advanced than the introduction to colored pencils. So you can start to see that uh, his face is being his face has started to take the focus um, of the overall image, uh, and there's two things that are helping that. The first thing is that I've added more detail to the face than anywhere else in the picture, uh, and you can apply that same principle to all of your traditional artwork as well as your digital stuff. The other thing that helps draw you into his face is that uh, the primary color, the teal color, the bright teal color that uh, breaks the overall theme of the blue and red that you see, uh, the, two, the two right colors, so the middle color here, the teal, is the primary, um, then the other two colors are just this red and this blue. Uh, this grayish color is just this blue desaturated and this lighter uh, reddish uh, skin tone color is just this color desaturated and then with the value kicked up a little bit. So these uh, four colors are actually just two colors and then um, this blue is the only one that sticks out. Uh, it is of a different hue than the other two. And that's what helps bring uh, some more attention to, to the eyes here. Uh, let's see. I'm going to bring in some of the red from the hair as well. So let's just bring in a little bit of red. You can see how it livens up his skin. Let's uh, do some of this on the nose as well. A little bit on the lips. Not too much. Lower chin. Cheekbone. A little bit of blush, I guess you could say. There we go. Um, let's, let's go darker. Let's go darker with the skin. So stay saturated, a little bit closer to a deep brown. Maybe like uh, one third of the way saturated. I think that uh, will be the way to go. It's 
Let's not make that highlight too sharp on the uh, on the cheek there. I don't want to bring it out too much, but just enough. Taking it right over top of the eye there, because the hair is coming down across it. darken up the skin on this side just a bit just overall kind of desaturate it pull out some of the yellow there make it uh, a little bit more lifelike and then we can pull out some of the highlights to uh, really sharpen up the face let's go back to the nose here and do some work on it What's his face look like without the lines? Yeah, so you can start to see that his face is starting to come together without the line art, which is what I what I would prefer. So now, without the line work, it, his face really draws your attention. He's kind of have like a pouty lip, doesn't he? His lips look a little pouty. <laughs> um. Oh no, no problem, Ankush. Glad you asked. Uh, can we expect a couples drawing live stream this month? Uh, well, the the problem is that uh, that Anna works so much. Uh, I'd love to do another couples live stream. It has been a long time uh, since we've done one. I think I think it's been about a year actually since we did our last one, which was a pastel one, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe it was a colored pencil one. Um, but uh, I don't know. I, I can't make any promises, but I'll ask her if she, she'd she like to do one. Maybe we could do one this Saturday or something. But it, it, has been, it has been quite a while, and it would be nice to do another one sometime. I'm gonna to try to work on this nose without, um, without the line work. I need a highlight color. Let's go a little bit brighter here. Start forming the uh, the shape of the nose a little bit clearer. darker down here the thing about his face is he's looking down so you wouldn't you wouldn't see his nostrils so I have to keep that in mind his his nostrils would flare up a little bit higher I should probably, honestly, I should probably have a reference photo open right now uh, to do like a realistic nose, but uh, I don't think I'm doing too bad. I think I'm doing okay, so I think I'll just continue. Just continue doing it like this. If we post you some line art, uh, you and Anna could color. That would be that would be fun. Yeah, it has been a long time. I'll I'll let her know when she gets home from work uh, in a few hours. I'll let her know that everybody misses her, <laughs> and uh, maybe I'll 
be able to convince her to uh, to do a live stream on Saturday or, or something. Something soon. At least a voiceover. She could always just do another voiceover for, for a video. Bringing a little bit of that background color reflecting on his skin. Uh, I think I might have brought in too much, too much in. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I mentioned it, but uh, I had, uh, since I didn't really have much of a plan for today's live stream, uh, I was literally just going to stream for as long as I felt like doing it, and I didn't really care whether or not, uh, <laughs> I didn't have much concern, that's a better way of putting it, as to whether or not, uh, how long I was going to stream for. So I could be, I could be streaming for quite some time. I mean, how long I've been streaming now? Like an hour? Yeah, I've only been streaming for an hour now. And um, I don't know, I got I got quite a bit done. He's starting to come together. I think his nose is a little bit too pointy. Uh, I need to fix this here. Just like, uh, I don't think it's too bad now. A little bit better. Let's see if I can get the poutiness out of his lips. They're just a bit too pouty. There, now they're a bit more serious looking. Oh, hello, Brenda. Uh, you're going to do another acrylic today, but I am getting closer to wanting to start with pastels and colored pencils again. Had to take a break from it. Started to lose focus and the fun. Yeah, it's all, that's that's the benefit of always, like, you know, switching up the mediums. You almost are always constantly having fun. Oh, welcome back, Anna. Thank you. Yeah, I've made a little bit of progress. Tiny bit. I need to uh, bring in some stronger lines for the eyes here. Especially this one over here. Even my pupil is a little bit dull.
Oh, hello, Lily. Your first live stream? That's fantastic. I'm so glad you were able to come. Welcome to the uh, family meeting. This is this is not what I normally do on my live streams. Pull out a highlight here. Go a little bit brighter. Let's do some highlighting. Maybe um, on his bottom lip a little bit. A little bit on his chin. Not too much though. I don't want to make that chin look. Uh, like real bulbous like tiny bit tiny bit on this cheek and then right here That's too much. It's too much. Soften that. Um, oh, uh, yes. Hello, Barbara. Uh, maybe the clump of hair over his nose with a little deeper shadow will help define the nose better uh yeah like right here by like right here the only reason i haven't like done that too much yet is because uh i haven't quite uh finalized where the hair is but i, I should probably do that so let's let's go back to my sketch real quick let's do let's do a little bit of uh coloring with the hair Let's see, let's just do this. Maybe I can... There. That makes it a little bit easier to see where I'm coloring. There, now I have a better idea of where the uh, the uh, face and the hair kind of separate one another. Uh, so let's grab this color here, do a little bit of defining on the shadow underneath this part of the hair. Have that shadow coming across his face a bit and his nose. Oh, happy birthday, Brenda.
let's get some shadow underneath his chin. Make his uh, face stick out a little bit more. Starting to come together. I don't want to do. I'm actually not going to do anything else to his face right now. Let's um. Let's uh, do some of the hair. I'm going to take my sketch back. Color in the hair here real quickly. Uh, I like that you can remove and replace your line drawing. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. It's on a different layer, so I just um, uh, turn it on and off. And then I have the opacity of it down, too. So this is full opacity. And then just uh, slowly making it disappear. Let's turn back on my shape dynamic transfer. Let's up my transfer a bit more. Let's go for the base color. So you know what? I'm going to take my lasso tool. And I'm going to just lasso off the hair. Oops, that's minus. It's supposed to be plusing. I'm just using the lasso tool to to draw in where I want the hair to be. And then I won't have to worry about where I'm coloring. bit of a mistake there. There we go. There, now you can see that the hair is totally cut out from the rest of the, the image. Actually, you know what I should have done? I'm going to do a new, oops, do a new layer and then fill that in. Um, and, wait, how, how far back can I go? All right, yeah, that's better. So I have the hair selected. I'm going to start a new layer, fill it in with the base color that I want, deselect it so I don't have to look at those dancing ants, make a new layer, and do a clipping mask. So now everything that I color 
will just be on the uh, the hair layer. Oh, hello, DJ. Yep, digital. It's been uh, it's been a while since I did any digital work. So there's like uh, you need three colors. You need three starting colors for uh, good looking hair. You don't have to go through. So I'm gonna just get my really dark color that I want. Uh, and I'm gonna come in and do my, my triangles. So I'll do one here, uh, do uh, one there. Uh, now these don't look much like triangles. They're like squiggly, or no, diamonds. They're, they're diamond shapes, that's what they are. Uh, they're like tips and then they get a little bit wider and then they're like stretched out diamonds Let's do up here So you you really only need like three colors to make the hair look uh, good uh, you can start with your diamond shapes the uh, elongated diamond shapes like I'm doing and just to establish where you want the hair to appear darker something like this Uh, and the base color is already laid, so I'm going to just take the same color and brighten it up for the highlights uh, using my light source that I established. Come in and just build in where I want the highlights. Not going too bright and not concerning myself with anything other than the direction that I want the hair to be growing. Other than that, not worried about like doing individual hairs or anything like that. Because obviously I want the hair to look um, not like blocky, like anime hair, but um, a little bit more fluid, a little bit more motion to it, a little bit more realistic, similar to his face. There we go. Uh, and then now you switch back to your dark color, shrink up your brush, and then come in here with your loose flyaways. This is where you, you, you can break up the flow of the hair a little bit. So you kind of come across um, and don't follow the direction as much with, uh, with everything else kind of uh, break it up, give it the, that looser look. Turn off my line art real quick. Yeah, so you can start to see it. Um, I'm gonna go real big to uh, some general shading. I don't like, I don't quite like the, um, the light source on it. I want to make it a little bit darker on this side. A little bit darker on the bottom. Uh, and then now I'm going to switch back to my highlight color. And add in a few strands with the highlight color. Nothing too fancy. Uh, I need to do a, a tiny bit more shading. 
I don't like this spot up here. It needs to spread out a little bit farther, I think. Thinking of Pictionary, that would be fun. Uh, Hydra, this is Photoshop CC 2018. Oh, hello, Heidi. Thank you. Uh, the last thing to do is to go outside the clipping mask. So I'm going to go with the layer below. Uh, select kind of like a mid-range color, I think. Give his uh, his hair some final flyaways. So working outside the clipping mask. This will give his hair even more volume. Now I can go back to the face. And since the hair is on the layer above, I actually don't have to worry about any part of coloring the hair. It's on its own separate layer, so I can just completely ignore it entirely. I'm going to darken up the edges of his eyes. It's a little bit too low. looks so easy, but it's not. I've tried it, but I'll try again. <laughs> While the sun is just now coming up and I'm drinking coffee, join the live stream with Will and good friends. Not a bad way to start the day. Well, I'm glad that is the way you would like to start your day. Oh yeah, layers uh, layers are fantastic. Um, if there's any if there's anything that like I would recommend learning uh, really really thoroughly is layering with Photoshop because it's just it's just so so um, helpful to you know make your life easier. Because now I don't have to worry about the hair at all. It's all by itself, and I don't have to touch it, and I don't have to color around it. It's fantastic. Why is it coloring like that? It's all messy. Turn off shape dynamic.
Um, my viewers always bully me for not naming my layers. <laughs> yeah, I I did start um, I did start naming them. Uh, I layer a lot. I, I mean, I, I usually n n name a lot of my layers. Uh, is there any version of Photoshop that works well on iPad? Um, unfortunately, iPads don't use Photoshop, uh, but there is a program uh, called Procreate. Am I right on that? Is it Procreate? I'm pretty sure it's called Procreate. Uh, that you can use Photoshop files. It's compatible with Photoshop. Uh, the layout is pretty similar. You have layers, you have layer masks, you have a lot of tools that Photoshop has. And like I said, um, you have options uh, to transfer files between the two programs. So there's a lot of flexibility there. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, I think that's the best that it gets. Let's see here. I think what I might do. Where is this color at? Okay, it's here. I gotta get rid of that. Can't see his ear back here. It's very annoying. I have like most of his face done on this layer. I know I'm gonna regret not having these layers very clearly defined. Uh, yes, it is Procreate. Okay, cool. I'm glad you guys are chatting it up because uh, I think I got to the point where I don't have anything left to talk about myself. So if you guys have any topics, any questions, please please ask me and I am going to do some more shading here uh, let's grab oops let's grab this color Yes, I love grouping as well. That's that's super helpful. I'm I'm uh, naming my naming my layers. There, nobody nobody can judge me. Nobody can judge me now. My, all of my layers are named and organized.
Um, this is very cool. Is this as hard as chess? <laughs> um, it's maybe. It, it's maybe slightly similar to the difficulty of chess. <laughs> Actually, now that you said that, I wouldn't mind taking a little, a little chess break. Let me see if I can do this. Um, let's go to chess.com. I think let's let's play uh, let's play a little bit of chess. Can I pull this down here? All right. Let's see. All right. Let's let's do this. I I had so I have streamed a few times over on my Twitch channel. Uh, playing chess, but let's let's take a quick chess break. If anybody of you, if anybody wants to play me in chess right now, uh, just sign up on chess.com. You can you can sign up through your Facebook page. It takes like one second, um, so you can play you can play me through there, and then you can add me as a friend, and uh, I'll play you. <clears throat> Uh, <laughs> all right. So one of the things, like, so w with chess, um, I have been, I have been trying so hard to get to eleven hundred, um, and I've done fairly well. I've I've gotten pretty close. Um, uh, I've gotten to eleven hundred, but then I dropped back down. So. It's pretty tough. I I play I play chess quite a bit. I'm probably going to lose this game simply because uh I'm talking, and this is a this is a, a blitz game, so it's relatively fast. And yeah, I it sometimes I re it requires like a lot of my thought process to make moves. Usually I'm like super, super, uh, uh, slow. Let's see, he goes here, I go here. Okay, I can make that. <clears throat> uh, your defensive player, uh, not, oh, how did I miss that knight? That's no good. Uh, that is a sacrifice if I've ever seen one. What does he have here? He's doing something. I can't take that bishop, can I? If I take the bishop, he moves the queen here. He's doing that check. I know why he's doing that check. He's doing that check so he can win my rook. So I gotta move here. Yeah, see, now he'll move his queen. Oh wow, he didn't. Uh, let's, let's, let's see here. Um, gosh, he's got me in a bad spot. Uh, I need to, Gosh darn it. Let's go here. <laughs> uh, the talking, uh, reading the chat and playing chess, probably not the bright, brightest idea. Uh, I'm in really bad position right now. My king is just 
not all that well protected. He's up. Uh, he's up a whole two pawns. I need to get rid of this gosh darn bishop over here. Um, this is not good. If I go, I need to move my knight. My knight is doing nothing. It's just sitting there like an idiot. This is the this is the conversation that uh, <laughs> I am constantly going through in my mind when I'm when I'm playing chess. My knight is looking stupid as can be. <laughs> I need to get this. This is a bad bishop right now because he's just blocking with this pawn all day, and his expansion on the queen side over here is just killing me. Uh, let's see, do I want to take that? I don't... He does not have... Okay, I can... That does not make my knight more active, so I'll keep that there. I need to develop this rook. Gosh darn it. I need to figure something out. I need to figure something out. What am I gonna do? Let's see if he wants to trade off this bishop. I have I don't have a very good bishop, so yeah, he does. Perfect. Yep, that lets my knight in. I'm gonna run out of time, unfortunately. Uh, now he's got my knight pinned. That's okay. Um, I have this. He'll probably move his queen here, keeping my knight pinned. Let's see what he does. But I had to, I had to push a three because if he pushed his pawn, that would be bad. Okay, let's see. What can I do here? What can I do here? Um, Gosh, I'm going to run out of time. Let's go here. He's probably thinking about pushing this. Now I can attack his queen because the pawn is pinned. Uh, I think he just lost. It's checkmate. Yep, he lost. Look at that. You get. You guys had no uh, support. You guys thought I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I was super close on time, though. Like that was that was a pretty good game, but he he blundered hard there. I don't know why he tried to attack my queen. I don't know why he tried to attack my queen. I won! What do you mean move my rook? I don't need to move my rook. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I win. He knew it was checkmate and won. Because once I moved my queen here, he only has one square for his king right here. And then I move my queen here and that's checkmate. Uh, anybody in the chat uh, want to play? I'll pl I'll, if anybody in the chat wants to play, then um, uh, let me know and, and we'll play one game. We'll play one game and then I'll go back to drawing. <laughs> I didn't, I, I didn't uh, anticipate playing chess. I was, I mean, I was in pretty bad shape, but he was only up a pawn, so I was in a defendable, sh in a defendable position, uh, but he blundered. 
honestly, chess is... Uh, if I were to sum chess up into a single thing, it would be that... Uh, a good a good chess player is just the one that blunders last. Or the or no. To beat a good chess player, you just have to wait for them to blunder. And and that's it. Uh alright, Chrissy. Um so let's see. Um friends. How do I find friends? I think if I go back to home. Friends, I forget how to. I forget. Oh, here we go. So, uh, what is your what is your uh, name on Chess.com? Send me a friend request. Is it Chris Art? Oh, okay, DJ. You take care. Uh, just created an account. All right, Chrissy, what is your uh, account name? Or I can invite you. Actually, I can do this. I can invite you via Facebook. Wait. No, I can't. Uh, not that. Invite with, uh, yes, okay, so. Ah, there you are. All right, I send you a friend request. Let's go back to play. Um, Play, uh, play a friend. So once you accept my friend request, I should be able to. Let's do unrated. Uh, let's do, um, let's do it. Uh, a a 10 minute game. Oh, wait. Uh, so it says you're not currently in live. Did you uh, get my friend request? Chrissy, did you get my friend request? I uh, can't find it. Um, so if you if you go to the home and then come over here to friends, click on friends. Uh, you should you should be able to add me. So go over here to add and then just type in my name. Which is uh, what is my name? It's, it's, I'm pretty sure it's just unmask. Uh, so my uh, my name has an underscore. See, it it has the underscore in it. Ah, oh, there you are. I see you. I see ya. All right, I challenged you. Oh, you get to be white. Good luck.
You gotta you gotta make a move. It's about to abort. Let's try that again. You have to be online, right? Where are you at? Uh, well, Wicked Illusions, uh, we were we were arting for like an uh, hour and a half or something. Actually, it's been two hours. Um, and okay. Wait a minute, what happened? Okay, you declined the, the challenge. Let's do this again. All right, challenge failed. Wait a minute. It says you declined my challenge. What are you doing? <laughs> well, anyways, we were we were arting for a long time and I, uh, I don't know how the topic of chess came up, but um, it did and so I decided to take a, take a, a quick chess break. Okay, there we go. We're in the game. It's your move. You're white. You gotta move first. It's gonna abort again. <laughs> you got five seconds to move a piece. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Rematch. You gotta move a piece, Chrissy. You, all you do is drag and drop it. There you go, there you go. Oh, interesting move, interesting move. Let's see, how should I do this? How should I do this? I don't wanna, okay, let's, let's, let's see, let's see how well Chrissy knows chess. I'm gonna play really bad. I know you moved, I see it. It's your move again. <laughs> Are you gonna move? You're gonna run out of time. Okay, fin shadows. All right, let's let's go here. All right, moving the knight. Let's see. <laughs> Blunders, checkmate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I think she fell asleep as well, Steve. Let's okay. Let's let's try that again, Chrissy. Let's try that again. <laughs> well, it is getting late uh, in Australia, so I mean. I'll, I'll go easy on her next time. Wait a minute, what's happening? No! What, do you, what is this? I don't want to play you. I don't want to play you. Where's, where's Chrissy at? Uh, no, unrated. There. I don't know who this random person is. Or why I'd ever play a 1900. Yep, I got you a little bit. Oh, okay, this time I'm white. You 
You got you're gonna abort the game. You gotta you gotta make your first move a little bit quicker. We'll play we'll play one more game uh, unless anybody else wants to play me. Okay, I'm white. Okay, there you go. Oh, attacking the pawn, very good move. Let's let's go ahead and defend that pawn. Okay, good development. Now she's using an engine. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Okay, okay, that's a good move. Uh, I believe this is called uh, Petrov. Uh, so I'll just take the free pawn, I guess. Okay, I'll take that pawn. What's with all the free pieces? You gotta protect them. Okay, I'll take this. You can't take that knight. Nope, see that's a mistake. You can't do that because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that pawn with check and you're going to have to either move your king, block with your bishop, and then I'm going to take your rook. And a rook is worth more than a bishop. <laughs> I'm scary in chess. <laughs> to, well, to be honest with you, I'm actually confused as to why you just gave me your queen. What'd you give me your queen for? What is this? What is this? All right, what are you doing with this bishop over here? Are you gonna take the knight or are you gonna move your bishop? Okay, you're gonna move the bishop. What if I do this? Now what? Now, what what are you doing with your with your dark square bishop? You got to figure it out. I'm gonna force you to figure it out. <laughs> Moved without thinking. Yeah. You got you still got eight minutes left. So I mean, you got plenty of time. Oh, I'm so confused. Now I'm attacking both your bishops with pawns. But what about this bishop over here? It's just stranded. It's just stranded. I don't even think I want to take it, to be honest with you. I think I kind of want to threaten your knight. <clears throat> yeah, I think I'll do that. Now you have to decide. <clears throat> now you have to decide what your knight is doing. Okay. <clears throat> your knight has some some decisions to make. What is that? What is that move? I'll just do this. <laughs> that rook don't do nothing. Quit chasing my queen. <laughs> You're not getting her. <laughs> You're not going to get my queen that easy. I would recommend blocking my queen's attack with your king move. Okay, free knight. Thank you. <laughs> uh, 
Let's see, what do I, I don't even know what I want to do here. There's so much I can do. I think I'll just castle. Yeah, and then I think I'll go here, and then here. Here. Oh, hello. Hello, uh, Garbor. Yeah, you're, you're not watching the, the wrong stream. We're just having a bit of fun here. Playing playing some chess, taking a, taking a small break. Short break. Ooh. That would be a good move, except it's free. <laughs> it was, it was, it was a nice fork. Like, you were forking my queen and my knight, and I had to choose, you know, what to do. Um, but it was a free rook altogether. Okay, attacking. Attacking, attacking, attacking. Um... Let's see. I think I like this better. Where is your king going? That is the question. He is going there, so I will check you. And mate. Oh wait, no. That was the right move. You can just take my knight. <clears throat> Pre-move blunder. I needed to protect my knight first. I mistook the pawn. I I, mean, I mistook the bishop for a for a pawn. <laughs> Uh, I think you have to go here. Then you have to go here or here. Let's see which direction you go. Okay, you went there. You gotta go here, here, uh, there. Uh, let's see. Let's go here. Closing in. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. I could have taken her second rook. <clears throat> I can still take her second rook. I'm checking her. Uh, yeah, let's take it. Even though I think... No, I didn't have checkmate. I have a really nasty check, though, right here. Because that just leaves this and this square. So here, I, okay, checkmate in two, depending on where she moves. Uh, move this pawn here, move this rook here, and that's checkmate. Because this is the only square I don't control. Yep, so I'll move this pawn, and then move this rook. Good game, Chrissy. Good game. 
It was fun. I I, I started playing chess back in January, uh, and so I, I'm honestly I'm not I'm really not that good. I'm I'm really not. But I can definitely beat new players. Like I know I only know enough about chess to beat new players, and that's about it. But when it comes to like, when it comes to beating players that are my level, um, uh, my level or higher, like I, I struggle a lot. There's actually, uh, I think it's actually this weekend, there's a, like a little chess tournament thingy that happens in the square. Uh, and I went to last time, uh, it was like the weekend I got back from the States and it was a lot of fun. Um, there was like this, uh, pro player or something that came uh, to the city center and he played uh, like nine people at once and I was one of the one of the nine people that was playing against him uh, and it was a lot of fun but now we're back to coloring back to coloring yeah little little bit of practice no thank you for the game that was fun oh hello Holly welcome to the live stream we just got done playing some chess uh, maybe maybe in a little bit if anybody else uh, is interested in playing me I'll I'll jump back over to chess.com but in the in the meantime if uh, you want to add me as a friend on there feel free to Uh, is that chess game free? Absolutely is. It is 100% free. Unless you pay for like special features or something, but you are not obligated to do that at all. Uh, is really not letting me get my work done today. <laughs> nope, I am going to be streaming uh, for some time now. Yeah, so for as long as you're watching the stream, you're probably not going to get too much work done. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I can be uh, that entertaining, though. That is uh, always a nice feeling. Alright, uh, let's see here. I think I'm going to take a lasso tool real quick. Um, hand one. Uh, take my lasso tool and kind of trim off this hand here so that I can get it. Uh, nice and clean. Just to zoom in a little bit, fix my line. So last, I'm using the lasso tool, by the way, uh, which is this one right here, third from the top. If you right-click on it, you have the lasso, polygon, and magnetic. Um, and I'm using the lasso tool to uh, make the hand a selection. Just like I did with the hair. That way I can get nice sharp lines for my fingers and stuff. Uh, 
Uh, who wants to sit and do voiceovers for the next eight hours anyway? Yeah, true. Yeah, I, I, I know the feeling. Uh, shirt, squiggle, shapes, mirror, jacket, shapes, too much, losing body form. Uh, well, I haven't, I haven't done the, uh, like the fine tuning of the jacket and the shirt. All I did was scribble down some of the color and establish the lighting. Yeah, so I haven't, I haven't gotten too much into the jacket yet. Am I still doing critiquing of artwork in your live streams? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, you know what, if you guys want to, uh, send me some artwork right now while I'm live, uh, if any of you have some work that you want me to, to look over, uh, just send it to me over on Facebook really quick. And I will uh, quickly uh, give you some feedback on progress or whatever you're, whatever you're working on. Any of your questions that you might have, happy to answer some of them. If I had, I was actually thinking about uh, the critiquing thing and had I, you know, scheduled out this stream like normal rather than just making it and then going live, um, I would have, I would have put a request over on Facebook or whatnot to, uh, to send me some of your work that you wanted me to critique because I, I like doing those. I like doing those, uh, critiques for you guys. Anything I can do to, you know, help out. Uh, maybe you're featuring artworks on your live stream. Yeah, I, you know, well, people that do the, uh, the colored pencil course, uh, I definitely want to feature their work on my channel. That's for sure. There, now his, his hand looks a little cleaner, right? Even without the line art? Um, uh, I could send you my latest piece. Sure, Wendy, absolutely, go ahead. Let me, uh, let me go, I don't even think I'm signed into Facebook right now. Okay, so I have a picture from Ankush. Uh, let's see, first one. First one looks like uh, it sent it to me upside down. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's, well, the one is just a set of eyes. So let me take this picture since it's a portrait. Um, let's do this one real quick. Put it on the top here. So here is a quick portrait from Ankush. And let me give you some pointers. Let's, uh, you know, I'm gonna just alter the, uh, the image a tiny bit so that uh, people can see it a bit better without uh, changing too much about it. I'm gonna turn down the saturation. That way, get rid of, get rid of that yellowish tint. 
Okay, so uh, there's a few things, and since I'm in Photoshop, I can just kind of alter it. Uh, there's a few things that I would say you can improve on this photo almost immediately, okay? The first thing is with portraits, you wanna draw attention to the eyes. You wanna draw attention to the eyes. So you can darken, you can darken uh, the eyelid uh, in the, uh, where the eyelashes are. So if you just darken those a little bit, you can already start to see it pulling in towards the face. Um, then uh, her nostril here looks a little big. Careful, careful with making the nostrils too noticeable because the nostrils are not exactly the most attractive feature on a person's face. Uh, the other thing, you really want to make sure that you have the curvature of her face nice and smooth. Uh, that, is the, that is the kind of feature of people that makes them attractive, is that smooth, curved look uh, on their face. Nice, smooth chin, uh, especially on a woman. Uh, you want to make sure that her jawline is nice and soft not too harsh so just like that uh, the other thing that you can do to really bring attention to the face is darken up the hair uh, you can just come in here uh, and add more to the hair and one of the things that I'm noticing with your hair is that it seems to be uh, kind of uh, scribbled like this instead of doing lines like this so do, don't, uh, don't color in the space in the hair by doing this up and down. Instead, do it like this with a purpose. You want to make sure that your, your lines here have purpose in the hair. So when you color um, in the hair, do a, do a base layer. Do a base layer by coloring it all in and smoothing it out, blending it with your like blending stump or whatnot. Sharpen up your lines down here on the neck and the chin and stuff as well. So you, you, get the, you get the hair all colored in and then you have it nice and soft and blended and you can take an eraser, you can, you can take an eraser and pull out some of those highlights and give the hair a nice flow. Kind of like this. The drawing seems to be accurate. The only thing that you needs improvement is kind of the uh, um, the values. And for the hair, you want you want the hair to be uh, nice and smooth. And then do the uh, the flyaways down here and you know over here. Give it give it a little bit more rounded, smooth body. Uh, bring it into the forehead a little bit more. Fix that hairline up. Uh, and then you can darken up the bottom part of her, her upper lip. Separate her... Uh, her lip from her teeth a bit more to get that nose to stand out you don't want to uh, for the nose you don't want to draw that line uh, you want to uh, darken the other side of the nose so that cheek there can be a little bit darker to bring out the nose shape a little bit um, and then for the rest of the image um, I can. I don't know if you just have the sketch down or not, but just uh, for the shirt, you know, establish your your lines, establish your shadows, and then just kind of fill it in. So it looks like you have the general shape of the shirt down like this or something. So something along those lines. Uh, so the, the, the light source is coming this way. So your highlights, you know, you want to bring your highlights in on uh, the sunny side, you know, 
a little highlight here, a little bit of highlight on this side of the face in general, something like that, highlight on our back over here. So that's where you want your highlights and then your shadows will be on the other side. So this side of her shirt will be a little bit darker, something like that. So there, that's uh, the improvements that you can you can make on that particular drawing. Let's see. Um, who else sent me a picture? Okay, I got a few of you. Here's Wendy's. Oh come on, Wendy, you're just bragging now. This is a picture. What do you want me to do with this? <laughs> Now yeah, this this definitely deserves to be shown off. So let me let me bring in Wendy's picture here. I don't know what she's thinking. Uh, me uh, critiquing this picture. Um, it's fantastic for sure. Uh, the if I was to if I was to nitpick at all, which uh, you're forcing me to do, uh, I would say the only thing I would have changed about this. The only thing that I would have done differently is the background. Um, you, you have lines going this way, and then you have lines going this way, lines going this way, lines going this way, and that way. And none of that would be bad. But here's, here's the problem. The problem is these lines don't connect to anything. And these lines are not going to the same. These these lines are going to the same point, which is over here. These lines are going to a different point. It creates this crisscross, and I think I think that it would have been better had you um, not had the lines crisscrossing like that. So if I were to take this color, um, I like the the direction that these lines are going. So if I were to uh, follow that. I, here's my vanishing point here for this part of the sky. I would have taken these lines out from there. So try to uh, give you the idea of what I mean without uh, altering the image too much. So you can see that it makes the sky just a little bit more harmonious. My coming from my vanishing point there, with uh, these lights, and it could have been the reference photo. I'm not sure, um, but you can you can start to see that um, now that those lines all make that harmonious vanishing point, they they kind of flow a little bit easier with the overall image. So that is the only thing that I think maybe uh, I would have changed or altered with uh, this particular image. Uh, other than that, um, maybe I've been a little bit blurrier with the background, softening the texture of the background. If See, I'm softening the texture right now. Um, if you would have gotten rid of all of the texture that you possibly could with the background, then what would have happened, am I even doing it? What would have happened is that your iguana uh, would pop out even more in the image. So you can start to see it. I just softened it a little bit and it's really taking a lot uh, with the image. Kind of making the iguana pop out just a tiny bit more uh, because the the, the issue is that the texture in the background is competing with the texture in the foreground. But that's that's literally all I can say about that one. That is just an awesome, awesome piece. Love it. Uh, I just realized that I can't see any of the chat. <laughs> um, Let's see. Uh, thank you. Uh, I was wondering because I knew I wasn't exact, but wasn't able to figure it out. Well, I hope that was it. Oh, you're welcome, Wendy. 
Let's see, I got one from Barbara here. Oh yes, Barbara, I saw this piece. This is, uh, I gotta share this just because. It's from the Colored Pencil Portrait course. So Barbara is working on my Colored Pencil Portrait course, uh, and this is her progress, oops. Uh, this is her progress so far, which is very nice. Um, the one thing, uh, so, the one thing that I can say, I can actually say two things. Uh, let me just grab a color. So you can go darker. Don't be afraid. Uh, I gave you the colors. I gave you the colors. Remember that. Um, so you can go a little bit darker on the skin up here, on the, on the forehead. Don't be afraid to add those colors, especially with the makeup there. With the makeup, don't be afraid to add those colors. I. I gave you the, the color list and I use them to their full potential, so don't you be afraid to use them to your full potential, I, especially under here, bottom part of the nose where it's shaded a little bit, you need to go a little bit darker there. Um, it looks like you're still kind of in the middle of the cheek here, um, don't be afraid to go underneath the lips a little bit. So yeah, that's, that's one of the things that I can say, don't be afraid to use the colors that I am using in the course, go darker. You can go darker. Um, the other thing is um, right here at the eye, this line that you're creating, this gap between the the actual eye and the skin is nice, but uh, a little bit too far. Yeah, don't make this line so obvious all the way over here. Um, get rid of that a little bit. Um, use some of the skin color and cover up that, that black line that you created, creating that separation. Uh, this is good here on that on the right side, but the left side it's good here Not so good here uh, This just uh, small correction just take some of the skin color and cover it up a little bit uh, It could also be from the photograph as well uh, Let's see I think I saw one from Steve. Let me see Steve. Would you send me? Okay, this looks like an abstract piece is that uh, acrylic paint on canvas? Looks like canvas. Um, let me copy this. So you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's on canvas. I think I can see some canvas texture in there. But uh, I, I'm not sure if it's the photograph or not. It's, it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. Um, I like the yellow, and this spot here appears to be blue. So yellow and blue, that's, and it looks like a little bit of green. And I don't know, this might be chromatic aberration from the camera. Uh, I'm seeing purple and blue and stuff, but I don't think there's purple and blue there. Um, I think it might be the camera. Um, I like I like this flow here that you have like the flow, and I like that you've concentrated a lot of texture and value right in the middle. That's that's really nice. I think what you could probably do is uh, maybe, I, I, honestly, I don't know. You could probably uh, sprinkle in a little bit of uh, purple. If there isn't purple, I'm, I'm seeing purple on my screen. It could just be the picture, but um, Purple is the complement to yellow, and I think maybe a little bit of purple in the center would be nice too. Uh, but as an abstract piece, it's really hard for me to like critique it. I don't really do abstract, and yeah, that's that's the most I can help with with that one. You, you gave me a tough one. That's a, that's a tough one for sure. Okay, I got one from uh, Loella. Okay, Luella, nice portrait. Nice portrait. Let me grab this real quick. Let me go back to the chat, see what everybody's saying. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, I did use a dad of purple. Okay, well, maybe it wasn't the photograph. It was It was hard to say from the photograph because it kind of looked like there might have been some chromatic aberration from the camera lens. 
Uh, all right, so this one is from Loella, uh, and it's a nice portrait. So there's, I like the composition. I like the the oval shape that you've created with the image. There's a few things that I could I can say about this. Uh, the skin tone for sure. So uh, you're not going dark enough with the skin. This is a very very common. Uh, problem that uh, people have with skin tone is that they are scared to death to add any value to it. Um, and I have to say that uh, the, the, the drawing looks accurate. The drawing looks accurate, but uh, you got to go darker with your skin tones. Uh, there's definitely uh, going to be a lot that you find with the skin that won't come out until you go darker everywhere else. So generally just cover your skin. Like I'm just taking one color and doing kind of a wash over the entire skin. Now it's not gonna look fantastic right off the bat uh, like this, but uh, that's it's the only route to go when making a realistic portrait. So now that uh, we have a bit of darker color, let's go even darker. So bringing out some of the the deeper shadows here. If you were to go darker, we can have kind of a, an imagined look of what it might look like. See, the colors of her face right now is about as bright as the highlights should be, unless she's like sprayed down with water or something. Bring out the cheekbones a little bit. I don't know if she's wearing makeup, but she could be. Cast a shadow from the hair. I'm not quite see the one thing about uh, the way that you have this colored is that I can't even tell where the light source is um, uh, it looks like there's a drop shadow from the hair down here and it looks like the light source might be coming down on her like this and if that's the case uh, underneath the eyebrows will be rather dark underneath the nose will be rather dark the tip of the nose underneath the bottom lip and then nice dark shadow on the neck. I'm not quite using the the right color here. But the neck would be rather dark and the cheekbones would be accentuated. Uh, but that's what you could do with uh, this portrait. Uh, if the highlight, if the light is from the top, then of course the the sh uh, the top of the forehead would be the high, the brightest and then you have the eyebrows uh, eyebrow bone and then of course the cheeks a little bit like that uh, and then it looks like you could probably do a bit more with her eyebrows don't be afraid to give your people eyebrows they need eyebrows sorry i'm just kind of scribbling them in there a little bit but um yeah Oh, you sent me an email with the reference photo? Okay. Let me check the... Wait, I didn't... Uh, I don't have an email. I don't have the email. I can't find it. Uh, <clears throat> but I can... I can... Even without the reference photo, I can still see like what needs to be built upon here, um, and it's just your color choices. Uh, if you're using Prisma colors, if you're using Prisma colors, then you definitely want to reach for like 1019, 1017. Uh, if you're using uh, luminance pencils, then go ahead and grab the 866. Um, zero nine three and eight six two. Those those are really good uh, shadow colors to help you out. Uh, did I have? Oops, wrong screen. <laughs> All right, that's that's what I got from you guys for pictures. 
So thank you for that. That was fun. Uh, what time is it? Oh goodness gracious. Been like this is like the longest stream that I've done in a long time. How are you guys still here? <laughs> uh, let's see what to, what to do here. What to do? What to do? What to do? Um. Hmm. Oh, I know what I can do. I can uh, take the hand. I'm going to come over to this hand now and do a quick lasso of it. too much of that hand down there. So I think I'll cut it off right there. Uh, let's see, where else? Uh, I think I went a little bit too much right there. All right, let's just grab this color. There, I think that's a, a cleaner looking hand without the line art. Uh, I suppose I can shade it a bit as well. Um, we've covered a lot of topics in this stream. Yes, we definitely have. <laughs> yeah, definitely a lot of topics. It's fun though. I Literally, the only reason I like started this stream was to just sit here and hang out with you guys. Um, you know, I didn't have any real intentions with this uh, uh, with this drawing here. It just kind of uh, happened a bit. So, yeah, it just worked out. down to my base layer. I think it's this one. Yeah. I think I can do a little bit of cleaning up. So if I select my hand, where's my hand? There it is. Uh, now I'm going to come down here, select the inverse, and then I'll do a bit of cleaning up. Take the blue of the jacket here. Take the background color and get rid of that nonsense. Take the couch color or the seat, whatever it is, down here. Clean up this a bit. Clean up the bottom edge of this cup. Wait, why is that selected like that? Uh, it's close enough, I think. It's a little bit cleaner. A little bit cleaner hand. I agree, Steve. It has it has been a while where I just, you know, just sit here and do whatever I want and not really feel pressured to do a tutorial or talk about anything specific. I mean, that's the, that was the whole purpose of the drawing journal from the very beginning. Um, course in the beginning I didn't have much of uh, I didn't have much interaction uh, obviously since it was pre-recorded but um, 
now with the live streams, it's just like, I can just go on forever. It's great. All right, Ankush, uh, thanks so much for coming by. Get some tasty food. Thanks again for uh, sending the, the picture of that portrait. Hopefully I gave you some, some useful tips. <laughs> I, I see your comment, Wendy, too, Elise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Label, label everything. Uh, let's see, let's go back to this face, neck, uh, and I have the hand on top. So since I have the hand on top, I can just take this color, work right around the hand with no regard to anything. Let's take a darker color. Mm-hmm. It's kind of establishing my my shadows a bit. Take this color. This this looks like a nice a nice color to bring into the shadows. Tell you what, he's he's starting to come to life a little bit, isn't he? It's still pretty loose for uh, a, a painting, but uh, I like it. I like the way it's coming out. I think I can bring even more attention to his eyes. Let's let's go in here. Let's do. Let's have some fun with the eyes. I just don't feel like they're good enough. They're not. They're not good enough. Right? Is this the right layer? Yeah. They're just not good enough. So I'm gonna shape them a little bit more. I'm gonna get in here tight with the detail. Go a little bit darker around the edges here. Go a bit sharper with the irises. Real sharp, that dark color there. Create a bit of texture. I'm not ready for eyelashes. Go a little bit darker on his eyebrows as well. Just give them a tiny bit of texture. Let's go over here and rework this eye. Sharpen up his irises and some of the detail in there. All right, now I'll throw in a few eyelashes, I think. Not too heavy. Like I said, as a guy, you don't really want your eyelashes showing up too much. I'm just going to put in a few suggested lines. Uh, I like this, uh, this nice teal color we got going on here. Bring in a little bit more of that into the eyes. I think that's nice. Uh, let's get some red in there as well from the reflection of his hair. Kind of on the right side. Uh, and then let's grab a nice bright 
white. Add some sprinkles. Some. There we go. Uh, add a little pinch of a highlight in his tear duct there as well. There, now his eyes look a little bit more bold. Oops, wrong layer. Where's the line art? There it is. There, now his eyes can kind of stand alone by themselves. Uh, the one thing to never skimp on is the eyes. If you can't get the eyes to capture the viewer, the rest is secondary. Yep, 100% agree. Have to do some other work now. Okay, Lily, thank you for coming by. It was nice having you. I like it. I am having fun. Uh, I think I want to sharpen up his shirt now. So let's see. I want it on top of the skin and beneath the hands. Yeah, I want it beneath the hands. So let's go here. Call it the undershirt. And I'm just going to bring out the sketch. Um, let's just go with it up here. Something like this. Uh, and then I'll chop it here. So that's just the first selection. And then I'll come over here and select it up here. And I'm not worried about the hand because it's underneath the hand anyway. So let's get that selected and then come over here and do this bit. Uh, I need some of it coming up here. So let's go, I think, no, I don't like that. I think uh, maybe over here like this. Have it coming up right along his face. And then I will continue it down here. Uh, let's go on this side. And then he has this belt buckle here. Uh, I'm not as concerned about the down here for now. I can always put that on top. So actually, let's just ignore that he's wearing a belt and just bring the shirt all the way across like this. There we go. Um, and then I have this bit here. So let's do this. Let's go here like that. Bring it around. There we go. Uh, and now I'm just going to kind of fill in in a little bit heavier. Just to make sure that my lines are nice and sharp. There, now his, now his underneath shirt is a little bit cleaner looking. Uh, what hosting did you go with? I'm looking into the nightmare of website myself. Um, so I'm with Weebly right now. 
and I'm actually going to be switching from them very soon uh, because I have way too much problems with my courses. Um, a lot of people that buy my courses that don't live in America have trouble downloading them because they only have like a server in the United States and it's really, really awful and it's super, super slow. Um, so uh, I am looking for a new web hosting uh, place and I have a friend that, that does coding in America and uh, he's going to help me out with a lot. He does like coding for marketing uh, software and so he's like really good at marketing, really good at like website stuff and he's going to give me a hand with like the transfer of my website and setting me up. Uh, I'm probably not going to start worrying about it until the end of this year, but I told him that I would definitely be getting a hold of him uh, to help me out because uh, there's just so much that I'm missing out with my website. It's just not performing at a high enough level uh, for what I for what I want to build. So, but that's what I'm using now, and I'm. I'm relatively pleased with their service. Uh, it's just that uh, when it comes to selling digital goods at the size that I sell, because they're like all over a gigabyte and pretty close to two gigabytes, um, so it, it just makes it hard on everybody that you know they can't download it. Then I have to email them a new link, and it's just a, it's just an ordeal constantly. Like I'm always having to monitor my my email because if I don't. You know, there's always that customer that is selling or that buys uh, one of my courses that's emailing me saying, hey, I had trouble downloading it. And then so I have to take care of those emails as quickly as possible, you know, so that I don't I don't want to leave anybody out. And I, I want them to be able to get the courses relatively quick. Oh, uh, I didn't realize he was asking you Wicked Illusions. I was just, um, uh, I, yeah, I was just, uh, I, I just read it and uh, assumed he was asking me. I thought he just didn't type the at on Mascard. <laughs> uh, am I going to work on the clothing page with the mouse oh um i well i colored it twice barb um and i am it's going to be a tutorial over on patreon so i'm going to i i probably do it later but uh, i'll post on patreon the this week's live stream which well, actually, it's tomorrow. I should do it. Um, and it's going to be a Photoshop tutorial, but not really pertaining to Photoshop too much. Uh, what I'm going to be going over is uh, establishing light and establishing um, color palette, which I kind of did at the beginning of today's stream. Uh, but uh, I'm going to be talking about it a little bit more. But yeah, that's the plan for Patreon tomorrow. All right, let's see here. Um, let's work on the shirt. So I'm going to create a clipping mask. Clipping mask for the shirt. And do some finalizing with the lighting. Let's get rid of the sketch, I think. No, let's not get rid of the sketch because I need it for now. Uh, let's go with a, a little bit more texturized brush. Let's see what I got in here. Let's do something a bit fabric-y. What does this brush look like? This brush doesn't look like anything. It doesn't. What the heck is that? Why would I? Who would ever use that? Um, let's go with. What is this? Plastic wrap. 
What is happening here? Am I missing something? Oh, oh, that's, that's, I can't use a clipping mask. I need to go back. Where's my selection? There. I need my, my shirt selection, and then I need to fill it in. I don't want to fill it in with that color, though. Let's go with this color. There we go. Now I can use a clipping mask. Clipping mask, shirt, clip, and under shirt base. Let's just, uh, there. Does that work? Mm, no, let's just keep it like that. Actually, maybe it does work. No, I don't like it. Uh, let's make this layer transparent. Now I'll go here and see if I can color. Can I color now? What is this color that I have? What is happening? Okay, there we go. Finally, 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 finally. This has a little bit of texture to it. I kind of like it. I need uh, to fix the transfer though. Need to uh, get these uh, this lighting a little bit more better it's uh, not looking too not looking too good right now give her uh, if, if you make the the difference between the colors like really smooth rather than sharp you get more of a silky look to the shirt and I think that's what I want. I think it makes him look a little bit more like mob boss bosses boss boss ish mob boss ish <laughs> if I can speak Oh, hello, crazed noob. Uh, what does CFTP mean? I don't know. I assume you're asking somebody else. <laughs> so I'll let them answer. There's something off about this. I don't know if I like this brush. <laughs> this brush is driving me a little bit crazy right now. Let's go back to the soft brush, soft round brush. Oh, 
Oh, you know what I think it is? I think it's because this opacity is so down. That would explain it. That would explain it. Now it looks terrible. So I am going to get rid of this. Uh, let's try this again. Now I don't know if I did like, maybe I did like that brush. I do kind of like the texture that it gives. Let's, uh, let's keep some texture here. A little bit of shape dynamics. There we go. Oh, that is wrong layer. I'm all over the place, people. I don't even know what I'm doing. There. Now. Finally. Oh my goodness. I think I'm going to try to make the shading a bit more stiff and see if kind of get away from the silky look and see how I like that. So I'll be a little stiffer with my brush stroke here, creating um, a bit uh, like sharper line for the cast shadow, and that will make the shirt look less silky and a bit more, uh, I don't know, what's the word I'm looking for? Cotton-like, make it look a little bit more like cotton. Wow, it's 3.30? It is getting late. My wife's gonna be home soon. It has been so long since I've streamed uh, for this length of time. It feels great. It's been awesome. It's been awesome uh, hanging out with everybody today. Of course, I totally procrastinated everything else I probably should do. <laughs> I think I'm okay with that. There we go, there's a little bit better shading for the undershirt. Uh, I still need buttons, of course. Uh, it's only 9.30 in the morning, you have lots of time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, lots and lots of time. Uh, I think what I'll do, so I want this on underneath, so I'll go back down to here, uh, create a new layer, label this layer, um, coat, 
and then I will grab my lasso tool. Um, I think I'll just start right here. Let's get that piece there. I'm going to zoom up just a bit. No, lasso tool. Come off the cuff here. Uh, let's do this line. Let's come down here, do this whole line. Come in a little bit more. And then we can come down here. Start with the sleeve. I think I'm behind the hand, so I can do this. Pretty sure I'm behind the hand, right? Yeah, I am. So the hand is on top, which makes this part down here very easy to do. Select all that. Uh, let's come over here and do this side now. Sorry, not too talkative right now. I'm concentrating a lot and trying to uh, trying to select all this takes a bit more concentration than the coloring part. There we go. Almost fully selected. I think that's good. So let's just grab this color. Bam. Jacket selected. Where's that? Oh, that's fine. Nah, that's fine. I'll put the belt on top, I guess. Uh, now if I can just decipher my sketch. Uh, create a new layer, clipping mask, coat, clip, um, and then let's see here. Let's grab this, let's grab this color here. I think that's good. And just do some quick sketching for the shadows once again. Should be like should be like that or something. Most of this jacket on this side will be dark because of the cast shadow from the head. This side not as much. Down here should be real dark.
Sorry, just kind of scribbling in where my shadows were. Trying to reestablish that lighting. This brush lets me create uh, that kind of um, plaid like uh, design really easily. Kind of quick too. Simple. I think I'm going to go to the background really quick to grab that teal color. We'll put a bit of teal right behind them. some light blue. Lighten this side up for like a light source a little bit. I'm gonna grab a big round soft brush. There we go. Now he's got a little bit more light coming from the left side. It just helps establish the the reason the light looks the way that it looks. Oh goodness. You know what? I have I just realized that I haven't eaten anything all day. So uh, I think I'm gonna call it a day. Like this this has been a lot of fun to work on. Uh, and I have had a ton of fun streaming like my whole day. And uh, it's getting really it's getting really hot right now too. Uh, since it's a little bit later in the afternoon, it's it's really heating up, and I think August is going to be a hot month for for us in Poland. Uh, July was like nothing; uh, it was actually cold in some some days. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think uh, I think I'm good where I'm at with this with this project here. Uh, maybe color in the chair a bit more. I'm actually just using my mouse now, but um, I think I think I'm gonna call it a day, unless anybody wants to play me in chess. <laughs> Kidding. What is going on with this brush? That is the color. Oh, that's why. gonna color in some of the chair here. Oops, not that far. There, now it's it, it, it looks a little bit sharper. <clears throat> Pastels on the next live stream. Uh, thanks for sharing the day. Uh, happy to, Wendy. Glad you enjoyed it everyone um yeah maybe maybe on the next uh the next live stream i'll just goof around with pastels or something i don't know uh i've been wanting i've actually i've been wanting to experiment with portraits with pastels um i've been i've been enjoying uh doing the like doing some digital work like i did today because um it's so safe to to just be loose with everything, uh, and you can always just change it and alter it, and you know, fix anything you perceive to be a mistake. And um, so it's it's kind of freed me up a little bit to to just be loose. And I've I've been feeling this overwhelming inspiration to try out like a loose. 
pastel portrait um, and to see how building up the layers from like a scribble uh, similar to how I did with this uh, picture today where I just kind of threw down a lot of color um, and then went in and started refining some of the details to bring out the character to bring the character to life a little bit more and uh, I kind of want to try that with a pastel portrait I've I've never done an actual portrait with pastels I've only done like the really small ones um, that I did recently over on patreon so I think that uh, maybe next week if I have some time uh, I got some things I pretty sure I should do uh, so maybe next week uh, I'll do a drawing journal where I just sit around with pastels um, I, I sometimes will spend some time thinking about like a particular subject when it comes to the drawing journals but uh, I don't I don't really like doing that I kind of like what I did today where I just jump on randomly and uh, and just go for whatever I'm doing uh, so I think that's what I'll probably end up doing uh, but anyways, uh, thanks again everyone for coming by and hanging out. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Thanks for playing chess with me, Chrissy. Uh, you're probably off to bed by now. Uh, I haven't seen you in the chat for a bit. But uh, yeah, as always, uh, give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And uh, come check me out over on Patreon. Uh, I'm going to be doing another tutorial tomorrow uh, over on there. So if you don't support me on there yet, uh, what you're waiting for? Uh, what else? Uh, also, my new colored pencil portrait course is finally available. If you happen to miss the video, I posted that last week or Saturday or something like that. One of those days. I posted it someday last week, I think. Uh, but uh, that is available on my website. I have the link for everything in the description. Um, and then if you're not already a member of the Facebook family, uh, I have the link for that. Pretty sure I have the link for that in the description as well. <laughs> Uh, I might have forgot that link, but um, you can find it on other videos if not. At this point, I'm just rambling, so I'm going to go make some food, and you guys have a lovely day, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.